Harris. Alrighty. Uh, welcome, folks. This uh, grievance is first of our bi weekly Star Citizen Twitch cast. Thamon over here. Memo on this side. All right. Going to be talking about one of Grievance's newest embassies, Star Citizen. And uh, uh, this has been actually quite the uh, quite the success story for crowdfunding ever since it's been announced. It's been kind of a, a phenomenon for Kickstarter programs as one of the or the biggest earner of all times, closing in on twenty one million, all funded by individuals no publisher no company none of that right Thamen? right uh, no corporations looking over their shoulders uh, the team has even talked about back when they used to have publishers and they changed one little thing like decals or a little bit of artwork and all of a sudden it would have to go through a test group again <laughs> so this one has been designed with a lot of fan input it absolutely has, and a lot of uh, the older folks out there will remember Chris Roberts from Wing Commander, Freelancer, Privateer. He's done some movies as well, which weren't quite as successful. He's been absent from the, the gaming industry for quite a while because, in his words, he could not make a game the way he wanted to make a game. And now with uh, Kickstarter, he's able to do that. Uh, it's been quite nice, actually, a bunch of these companies popping up that have been very successful. Uh, in Star Citizen's case, it was almost a year ago, they went into Kickstarter asking for half a million dollars, and like we just said, it's almost $21 million later, one year later. A lot of people contributing to the funding. Uh, the team has been very open to its fan base, uh, weekly broadcasts, uh, Wingman's Hangar. So it's also been very great about like feeling like these guys really listening to their fan base and caring what's you know going on there. Yeah, there's a lot of input on the game as it's ongoing. Uh, they are changing, integrating things that the fans want. One of the things with the the crowdfunding is every time you they hit a goal, they introduce more stuff to the game that they wanted in, but it was you know the money wasn't there to do it. And it's every every rung that they hit is is an exciting rung, because you get more, you get more loot, more gear, more options to the game. With the twenty million dollars, they added uh, first person combat to the game, right, Damon? Yeah, which was a mechanic that they were already installing because they wanted to give you the ability where you can actually board other ships, and. Uh, you know, melee first-person shooter combat on board somebody's other ship. Um, but be, due to the amount of funding, they're going to try to make that even more expansive on different lawless worlds and such, you know, right off the start. Uh, these stretch goals, they're, they've been amazing. I mean, I would advise anyone who hasn't got in that the price of even some of these uh, cheaper ships is the price you would pay for this game at retail. And it gets you in for all these little stretch goals, a personal laser pistol, you know, side pistol, um, a few other things. I think there was like some repair robot or something mentioned at one point. That was, that was a ways back, though, so that's really hard on the memory. <laughs> yeah, I started with a very modest pledge. And one of the things you can do with the game as more content comes out, new ships, this or that, you can actually melt down whatever you've bought back into credits maybe add a little bit more money to it and take yourself up to the next rung and that you know you just getting your foot in the door and then you have the you know the ability to upgrade as as time goes along it's a uh, really very interesting they just recently released the hangar module which allows you to go in and view the ships you've purchased and there are constant upgrades coming out with that they're not flyable or there's no combat but you can go in and you know set at the wheel you can push all the buttons make everything work it's it's very neat it's been one nice thing i mean and this is a game that is in the pre-alpha stage at this point i mean alpha doesn't begin until a uh, the next module the dogfighter module coming up um, but here's a chance for something even pre-alpha that fans can get in and walk around 
and we've had a lot of uh, guildmates interested in this I hope a lot of other people will kind of get their foot in the door here early um, I do have that video here if I think it's been uh, probably big enough audience we could maybe st uh, tease them with that yeah let's go ahead and run that it's a fantastic video alrighty so they call this their AMD HD reveal but on their website they also called it a sizzle reveal and uh, I tend to agree this this video does sizzle And I tell you, that should get anybody excited for that game right there. That is an awesome video. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a veteran backer. You're a veteran backer as well, aren't you, Thayman? Yeah, I'm a, a veteran or original backer. I, I, I am in the far. I'm it, in the veteran backer, and that gives you some perks. They have limited uh, li or lifetime insurance is one of the perks with veteran backers. And uh, we still have that available on purchases up to the, the 26th. And I've been trying to tell folks, too, I mean, if you're, if you're just getting into the game, the lifetime insurance isn't available, but if you know somebody who's a veteran backer, they can still buy it and gift it to you. So that's a big thing, too, before that day, like I say, November 26th. Uh, if you know somebody in there and can uh, work with them, they can gift that buy it and gift it over to you you work something out I think I might have helped a one guildy out with that already so if there are any more that are you know wanting help with getting the lifetime insurance but are kind of late to the game I you know I'm definitely available for that it's uh, I mean it's it's definitely worth it it's not a big deal but every little bit counts mm -hmm. I think it'll be nice I mean the uh, you know folks ask about the lifetime insurance the fees and that in the game you know they did say it's going to be minimal but you know it's just it's still a nice thing as even as the other stretch goals and perks as they roll by i think folks would want to get in on that and they did say too you know any fees that are related inside the game is only during your actual play time so if you do find yourself outside of the game for a month you're not going to come back and find yourself kicked out of your hangar or anything let's see and we should uh, we should probably mention too as far as you know this game uh, it's not just the persistent multiplayer universe it starts off with a single player game too that's an optional one uh, and me being a uh, past wing commander player <laughs> me as well, as well. As the others, uh, I'm looking forward to this. They're pretty mum on anything with the storyline, but it sounds like uh, there there are going to be choices. Uh, your crewmates, the NPCs, are going to be reacting to your choices, and uh, you know, friends, foes inside there. 
We had a question here, Thayman, about has there been any more info on other players helping crew your ship? Uh, my ship that I have is a Constellation. It's a four-person crew, and that is definitely going to be going to be something they're doing. We will have you know NPCs that pretty much other players can jump into as as crew on your ship. While when there's not another player character playing them, they are your ship crew. So that's definitely definitely in the works and, and part of the plan because one of the reasons I got the constellation was so that I could have a crew and you know have that MMO kind of play experience where I'm playing you know along with other individuals instead of just playing a single player game yeah I thought that was a nice thing about the way they're trying to do some of this too is they uh I mean, on one hand, they want you to actually fly your ship somewhere to get somewhere. Some of the most valuable stuff in the game is going to be maybe other side of the universe. But that if you log on somewhere and you're a few star systems away from your buddy and he's got a big ship, you can jump into an NPC and uh, help him out. Uh, they have mentioned, too, there's uh, going to be multiple character slots, which is also going to fit into this. So that you can have maybe different characters assigned to different ships or be able to actually run one character but have your other multiple characters design them as at first NPCs. That's a rather new development too that we've just recently heard about and there's not that much info on it but one of the exciting things I heard about that is say like me you have a constellation or one of the bigger ships well you've purchased character slots for NPCs to be your crew well the inevitable happens and you pass on you can literally step right into one of your NPCs that you have you know designed from the ground up just like a player character and then continue on with your adventures yeah and uh, that was I tell you that one thing it came out with that article death of a spaceman and that was yeah, a, that uh, something <laughs> that was something that people were uh, that you, you, totally new idea, and yet Chris Roberts, um, you know, he did want to make death mean something. You you can't just die over and over again and uh, just slight penalty. Yeah, and that's yet it, something that has been lacking from games. I know a lot of us older gamers and younger ones as well. You know, there there is really no penalty for death. A lot of people are, you know, they want it to mean something. So it's not like, ah, oh, well, I'll just run in here and die. It's if I die, I'm going to have to start here or start there. And it, there's there's a feeling that, you know, you want to avoid at all costs. And that has been lacking from every game I can think of recently. Puts a little more element of risk in there. We got another question here. Any speculation on how fast the UEE cops will react to me pirating another player? Do you think they will respond in a time frame similar to what a player could respond in, or will they instantly pop into existence or and blow me up? You know, that, that on the forums has been a topic for so many threads. I don't think we know any more about it than than you. Um, it's going both ways where they're saying, you know, people should be dealt with instantly and that it should be more realistic. Um, you know, I'm kind of going to go with however they go on that. You know, it does sound like, I'm going to go ahead and pop a little artwork slideshow in for folks, but it does sound like uh, that, first of all, there's the PvP slider, and it does tend to uh, make folks think that, you know, if you've got your PvP slider geared for PvP, that you're going to expect to run into other people likewise. And I think, aside from the PvP slider, you know, you might not run into those, you know, kind of folks that will interfere, but there's also very lawful systems that are patrolled and lawless systems out on the fringe. So I think that would make a big impact on whether you even see another player during that or UEE presence at all. Yeah, I'm unsure how that's going to work. That is one of the theories, and that 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 would be, you know, that would give your PVE people, you know, some kind of safety net. Don't go out into a system that's, you know, unpatrolled. If you go out in a system unpatrolled, you're going to look. I mean, you're you're going to you're very likely to run into people that are looking to take your stuff, and that that risk factor there is something that that is a track. It attracts me to this game as well. Yeah, they they definitely have a big crowd that likes to do the 
pirating and living outside the law out on the fringe. So they're definitely uh, building some systems to cater around that approach as well. You know, that's another one of the things with the game. You have, you know, you have your people that want PvP and want to pirate. You have people that want to explore. You have people also that, you know, they, they want to mine. They want to craft. I mean, it, 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 there's a little something for everybody here. Um, that's and that's what we thought too, because people are talking about you know what do we get into once we get into the game. Um, it is very, it's not like your characters really build up a certain skill set, um, and of course we don't know totally how this will work, but it is very much based on, like combat is based on your own reflexes. As far as trade in that, it sounds like you don't have to choose like you're going to be a a salvager and nothing else. Anyone can do salvaging on the side. Any people may work on overclocking systems and electronics on the side. I, I think, yeah, you want to comment on that more too because that sounds like a big uh, pull to some of the player base as well. Uh, th things like overclocking computers. You can alter your starship. If you're not too careful, <laughs> you could blow something up on it. That's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, the skill-based factors to the combat and the flying, you know, from my viewpoint, I see that as as awesome as an awesome challenge. Unfortunately, I'm not very skilled at that kind of stuff, but I, I am looking forward to uh, to learning that. And I have been practicing with the flight simulator because the combat and the flight is supposed to be you know real physics as close as you can get to real physics with a with a game yeah that was actually uh, a big thing we liked too some of the one of the first videos they showed was a hornet which is these little guys up on the uh, that you can see here flying out in space um, and it showed how they have different maneuvering thrusters to turn it. Um, uh, I've seen some video where it looks like those things kind of turn on a dime. Uh, but when you're engaged in fighting another player, there's not like random critical hits. You can target their thrusters, you can target their engine, you can target the cockpit and the pilot and try to take out specific parts of that system. And uh, as uh, the ship getting fired on, if you start losing thrusters, you start losing that maneuverability. I think it's pretty fun too. I mean that that also went in with the uh, if you do try to board another ship, it's meant to be hard. You got to take out thrusters, you got to take out their engine, but uh, you know there's people out there that will probably uh, end up being very good at that with a little practice. Yeah, there there will be much younger than me, I'm sure, with the good <laughs> hand-eye coordination because I I am I am lacking that. But you know there is so much to do in this game that you know it, it, it appeals it's going to appeal to everybody out there um do we have any information on private servers and how that's going to work Damon? um just a little bit it does sound like that folks can come out with their private servers um can very much likely mod them any way they want and some of those mods uh will take notice maybe uh you know with uh Chris Roberts and the folks behind it and they said some of those mods you know might end up finding their way into the main game if they like them but it does sound like folks can create their own you know bubble persistent universe to play around in if they like uh, it did sound like some of the challenges that will happen in the main universe will spread over into that but they did declare that they're not going to let any spoilers into the little private universes uh, compared to like the main one so so likely if you you know if something new pops up something universal threat or whatever um, you're still gonna see most of the action on the main uh, main servers even though that can show up in the private ones as well why don't we talk about the squadron 42 section of it because a lot of people are confused about what the actual game is because they hear squadron 42 and then they hear star citizen and there's i know there's a lot of confusion when i try and explain things to people on what the actual game is and what the difference between those two are okay um it sounds like so when you start off uh 
the star set of the squadron 42 sorry squadron 42 is now that's a single player game it's labeled as optional and it sounds like and again a lot of this stuff is very early pre-alpha uh, it may even be released a little before the persistent universe um, but it will if you're when you run through it your character will have uh, come out of it with a few perks they'll come out with uh, citizenship kind of reminded me of that starship troopers and that idea was based on service equals citizenship uh, which will definitely have some perks in the game although again we don't know too much about those yet they did uh, they did make it sound like though it's optional and that's so if you wanted to go straight in the persistent universe things like citizenship and that can be earned you know other ways as well yeah the the op the optional part I've, I've heard as well one of the things that they've said about it with the perks is you know you'll get citizenship which will allow you to you know step into the star citizen universe with some things at your disposal it's been kind of vague this way or that way what exactly that is um, you know more information will be forthcoming like so much for this game you know a lot of the stuff we're discussing even now will change with input from the community which is is a great thing I think mm -hmm. put up another little slideshow these are my two babies in my business hangar uh, the freelancer which I mean I will kiddingly call this thing like the uh, the Winnebago of the Star Citizen universe <laughs> You know, two crew, but you can kind of see inside of it that four people can go in there. It's a little cramped, but good-sized cargo ship. And then the other one, the Hornet, which is supposed to be a really good top-of-the-line dogfighter, although what the citizens will get will not be quite as nice as the military version in the uh, single-player game. Although, again, you can modify these ships. Yeah, there are several versions of the Hornet. I think there are two out there right now. I don't think the military one is available as a ship for pre-purchase. That is correct, right? Yeah, that's what I've been told. Uh, the military, you know, I guess even in game they're trying to keep that a step ahead of uh, the civilian sector. But, you know, folks can buy and try to upgrade and modify their civilian Hornet. So it, it makes it sound like a person could make it pretty close to the military version. Yeah, the, the the difference is the storage space or the for cargo or the ball turret, correct? That the military has so far, and then as we have mentioned in chat, there's rumors there's four different variants, and I I have read that as well. But a lot of this is subject to change. Just since I've been following the game, I have watched the site go from fairly basic to almost completely interactive, and if if people out there have not visited the website there's a wealth of information there the ships listing listing all the specs it's just a lot to take in and uh, just get you excited about the game every time I go there um, I was gonna add in too because I was kinda looking at one other thing when we talked about folks having different lifestyles inside the game that they can look at um, I think Fui didn't mention a big thing the the blood flow of the game are these trade lanes uh, players can explore they can find new jump points to open up new trade lanes um, obviously players that are on the pirate or bounty hunter side will be affecting those trade lanes um, but they said there's things like you could continue your UEE service um, and there's even raceways planned for racing ships you know, Roberts has said he plans on putting some long-term um, uh, addendums, expansions into this game. And uh, I'm really eager to see what he's going to come up with. Me as well. He is a extremely creative individual that, you know, made some of the greatest games of, of my youth. And, it, you know, I'm really interested to see how this game develops and how it's even how it's developed since I became interested in it is just, you know, it, it's amazing. You know, we got a comment, might even have player-based UEE political influence, which, you know, that's another facet to the game that is going to be fascinating. It's, you know, kind of like the, uh, the, the community will be, you know, the economy will be a 
community based so what you do in game what you learn how to sell what you learn how to make you know and right now they have contests going for people doing ship design and some of these ships and other things are going to make their way into the finished game it's you know it's a lot to get excited about it's some some time off till we get a launch but it is uh, something to be looking into if you have not already so one thing that I like that they've been keeping their fan base very actively engaged, releasing these modules, the fact that we'll be able to play with dogfighting very shortly, um, that there will be a planet side one coming out in the spring, and to see where that goes. Um, oh yeah, and uh, I did see, because I got now, it was talking about the political influence, that came up on Wingman's Hangar last night too. They were... You know, it's not like they gave a firm answer, this is early, but it was definitely something that they probably would look into long term. It sounds like everything about these guys, they're kind of making the game that they'd want to be playing, and they are they sound like they're very much along my line of thinking, too, with it. What about, I, I see we have a note here on Alien Races, Thayman. I That is something oh. I really haven't looked into that much what's the information on that that we have uh the information uh, of course there's going to be one enemy race that uh enemy alien race that is hostile the vanduul i believe and uh there are going to be other alien races present although it sounds like at release you're only you're going to be limited to generating human characters so it does sound like though in the future uh Again, Death of a Spaceman. You'll eventually be making some uh, alien characters for your crew or trying one out. I do know that the Vanduul do have a, a ship, the Scythe, which is in some of the videos we've seen already. And some character, some people have been able to pick that up already as a uh, backer reward. And they have stated, though, that a lot of these things that you can pick up early will be available in the game as you you know you can work toward them yeah nothing that is going on right now for you know pre-purchase or investing in the game is n it, it will all be available in the finished game you can all work your way up to you know anything that, that you could pre-purchase mm -hmm. I think the one uh, the one still big thing that folks do like and should get in on is again that lifetime insurance if you've got a friend if you can you know find someone to get you in on that because you know it still sounds like it's a little thing because there's still going to be insurance in the game when it comes out but uh sounds like a heck of a convenience and you know like i said if we didn't i think already touched on it even the uh the smallest contributor levels will get you a ship where you'll be paying the price of the finished game now and yet it'll have alpha beta all these other perks will you know come with it we got a question how much is the life insurance for vets or original backers the lifetime insurance comes with any ship you buy as a veteran or original backer any ship that you purchase has that on it so from someone who missed that the way, the way, and they f fully support this way to get around it. What someone does is they would buy a package without lifetime insurance. They can you, you can then gift that to a veteran backer who melts it down into store credits, rebuys it with their veteran backer status, and gifts it back to you. And the transfer keeps the lifetime insurance. And that ends the 26th of November, correct? Yeah. For veteran backers and original backers? Yeah, um, they left that in because they assume too you want your family in, you want your friends in. Um, I, you know, I of course would say if you're going through a stranger, maybe you want to show a little more uh, uh, caution with it because you do have to gift this back and forth. But yeah, uh, exactly. We have a question from Steel. OFD PT23 just mentioned politics. How much do you foresee politics being integrated into the game? Do you think there will be political factions in game at launch, or do you think that the politics in game will be player created? They might have some kind of framework. This is just speculation, but you know this game is going to rely on player created everything. You know, that is a very good question, though. But I have absolutely no idea. You know, they did say it does sound like maybe for release. Uh, 
player created ones you know might not be in but that's going from the early guesses and I'm only guessing that because I saw the wingman's hanger last night so that's a big one if you're new to this wingman's hanger comes out you know every Friday off of their main site and they do address a lot of questions on their forums I do know that for guilds and uh, big player organizations there are going to be things such as uh, commandeering or trying to get space stations having capital ships where uh, a uh, let's let's assume guild leader or raid leader you know slash and slash uh, can direct their uh, ships they pretty much said like on the Idris and a lot of capital ships like commander can, ships yeah you, you can be there directing where like this fighter group go after these guys so it sounds like there can be some big goals whether it's in a PvP or PvE style uh, that raid groups and guilds can affect and get into I do see yeah, um, a lot of people talk about assassins and space pirates like I say it does sound like they have a large player base that is into this and into trying this and yet I've heard too some people kind of um, uh, also worried about EVE Online which I've never played and trying to avoid some of the pitfalls involved there and the the producers have been responding to that too they're very mindful of trying not to repeat you know some of the bad things about their predecessors yeah and they've said you know if you're in safe areas you are going to be safe if you venture out of safe areas you know it's that's that's something you're taking in into your own hands there which is you know how a real universe should be as far as you know they've been very and the forums have been going berserk about this very kinda you know non-committal about you know what's gonna happen if someone comes into patrolled space and takes a ship you know or is it gonna be immediate response is it gonna be realistic and you know how easy is it gonna be able how easy are you gonna be able to take a pirated ship and get the tag swapped out and you know make it your own and th that has been a topic that I, you could e read endlessly on it and it will continue to be till they make an official statement uh, Jericho Boatman you gotta teach me that trick sometime yeah that's that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah what uh, let's see and talk about said safer equals safish yeah um, there's also been up to this point more speculation if you are a pirate you're going after somebody now they have said that okay maybe that player could place a bounty on you but it did sound like there might be all sorts of tricks uh, that we don't know about yet to get around this like whether you're trying to jam your identification so they don't even know who's attacking them um, or you know they might have some on the ship but not the actual player handle inside it and there's been a lot of discussions too about even what might happen if you're trying to board an enemy ship what little devices or countermeasure devices they might have all right Try to think if we had uh, any other questions to wrap it up because we've covered most of uh, you know most of the subjects uh, we had. I think we've we've hit all the highlights. Does anybody have any questions for us? I do know we've got one guildmate that's got sixteen ships already. Yes, yes, we do. We have quite a few. How can you get an R two D two like memos? <laughs> I, I, we'll talk about that later, Frenchie. <laughs> uh, I told him that would actually that's a nice touch for the background. All right, so a uh, few things uh, to hit important reminders as we do kind of wrap it up. Well, we use our names in side. game, uh -huh. like these names are our real names. I use Memo for everything. You use Thamen for everything, Thamen. Most everything except this one uh, my handle on the forms is it, and depends on how you read this because there's like two names the smuggler or DL Bard but if you go to the grievance site um, which time to get that up uh, you'll find me as Thamon or Thamon Trolls Bane and a lot of mines um, and Jericho Boatman yeah we're, grievance yeah. is a big multi uh, game 
organization. So I've yeah. got these two here. The top one, robertspaceindustries.com, the Star Citizen site. The bottom one, yeah. grievancegaming.org. Yeah, we are playing tons of games right now. We have a footprint in almost every game out there that's being played right now. So, I mean, if people are looking for something to do until Star Citizen comes out or just get to know the community they're going to be playing with, we are an ideal place for that. Um, I, I am Memo on the forums. I'm Memo on our team speak. I am also the Grievance Council president. I have a long history and involvement with Grievance, and I will be a big part of Star Citizen, as will Grievance. Nautica, is there 16 ships? Is there an advantage to having so many ships? Well, I mean, it's impressive. Other than that, I, I don't know. 16 ships is very impressive. <laughs> I think there's some perks. I, I Maybe the other one is you get to go inside every ship and you know their weak points if you're in them in combat. <laughs> For me, it'd be like, I have 16 ships. That would be the, the biggest point there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, last thing too, like I say, this will be a bi-weekly cast. Uh, the next one is going to be October 19th. Uh, I won't be there. Memo will be there. Anything you'd like to say about that? Well, I'll miss you, Thayman. Uh, you're, you're my go-to guy on the actual facts. So that will be that will be problematic in two weeks. All right. So, guys, folks, tune in. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will catch you next time. See you in the verse. <laughs>